Good morning and welcome to our business briefing. Thank you very much for attending. So uh, without further ado, I will start to go forward. Oh, please note we are recording this session so that any questions or comments that you put on um, may be recorded for later use. So I'm Dr. Dr. Catherine Richards and I'm very, very lucky and fortunate to be the principal at East Norfolk Sixth Form College, which I'm very proud of and very um, happy to introduce this business briefing today. So I'm just going to give you a really uh, short introduction on East Norfolk Sixth Form College to put it in context. And then we're so lucky to have Sarah Knights here, who's the head of T-level development um, and will be bringing you some really useful information before my team, um, Dr. Simon Fox and Michael Papagiorgio go on first to tell you more about T-levels. So in terms of the, the um, college, you can see there uh, an image of the college and lots of people see the front, but this is really useful aerial view. So you can really see that we are seeking and we are looking for that feel of a mini university campus. So you'll notice there all the amazing facilities that we've got. Clearly, we have got a long history of um, good for Ofsted. And I think that's really important in the context of T-levels. That's why we're opting to do T-levels. That's why we're committed to making sure that our young people people get the very best education possible and you can see that's across all areas um, of Ofsted whether that's progress, attitude, teaching or support. And in terms of our success, uh, success for us is very much about academic success and the vocational success or the technical success. So you can see here whether students are wanting to go on to um, careers directly in industry or whether they want to go on to Cambridge or Oxford, um, they can have those opportunities here. And that's why making sure that we're doing everything right and making sure our our students perform extremely well is so important to us. And you can see there, there's some amazing statistics that we have in terms of progression to university, locally, nationally, but also making sure that our students go on to the very best destinations when they leave us. Now, we really put a lot of investment into our EXTEM program and our EXTEM program, as it says here, is for those students wishing to get into competitive um, universities, maybe going to study in Europe um, or America uh, and having that extra push, having those extra activities really does make um, a fantastic difference. This also applies to our students going on to apprenticeships or going into vocational areas. So everything is about making sure that we get the students supported and moving into those areas at the highest levels possible. And here in terms of our HE success, one thing we're really, really pr proud of is the performance that our students um, achieve in this local area. So in Great Yarmouth, they go on to the best universities. They go on to get more firsts than others um, coming from more privileged backgrounds. So we're really, really proud of that. And we want to make sure that that continues well into the future. So our students uh, here, education isn't just about um, what happens in the classroom. It's also about what, what happens in and around um, the students program. So you can see here we're very, very privileged to have and certainly um, Dr. Fox was a, a great instigator in this. We have a program that we run with the UEA, which really makes sure that we look at all the personal skills and we make sure that the students go on to actually be able to the to uh, engage with the very best academic and extracurricular activities. So whether that's clubs, societies, enrichment activities, a really well rounded programme which helps them build their confidence. And also we're so lucky to have, I think this is the, was well, certainly the first in the east um, of the of the county, but I think it's one of the only ones in the country. We're really, really lucky to have our own combined cadet force. Um, again, really helps our students um, with their confidence, huge range of amazing activities and combine this with the fact that our students can do Duke of Edinburgh right up to gold awards and many have already. Um, I think this is a really brilliant offer for young people to go on to whichever careers or options that they want to do in the future. 
Alongside, um, if you are local, you will have noticed we have a huge 3G pitch um, now on our campus. It will be finished ready for September. So we also do lots of other work in terms of working with the Community Sports Foundation and offering a huge range of activities that help students, whether that's elite football um, or getting involved in community sports. So we so again, um, it's making sure that we have excellence in all of our areas. And uh, again, we're super proud of this. Whatever a student wants to do, we're here to make sure that they can fulfil that dream. And this year, as I mentioned earlier, um, currently as we speak, we have some um, diggers in the car park uh, and they are out there actually getting ready because by September our 3G pitch will be there. And even more exciting, uh, we will have all of our investment in T-levels and you're going to learn more about the areas where T-level investment is happening. But the total investment in the site is around this year £3.3 million. So we're really talking about our students having amazing facilities which are going to really help them go forward. Now without further ado I'm going to hand over to my deputy Dr Simon Fox and he's really going to give you lots of extra information about T-levels. That's brilliant. Thank you ever so much, uh, Catherine. And uh, as Catherine said, we're going to um, delve into T-levels a little bit now, uh, which is, of course, what you've come along for. Um, and we're going to hear firstly, um, we're very, very lucky. We've got Sarah here who um, who I'll introduce shortly. Um, and she's going to give a bit of context for T-levels from the Department for Education perspective. And then we're going to talk about T-levels here at the college. Uh, the routes we're offering and also the opportunities for you to get involved in supporting young people here. Firstly, hopefully, so it has a massive impact on your own business, but also so that we start to build the pipeline for the future for the sectors that we're already passionate about in the local area. So um, firstly, what I'm going to do is um, share um, a short video, um, as I said, and that's going to um, hopefully give you a little bit of an insight into T-levels. Um, and it's one of the piece of promotional material that they're starting to share from uh, the T-level um, programme. So hopefully it will um, work. It's embedded. If not, I shall uh, pull it across from the Internet. But um, do do um, do kind of uh, take some of this in. And again, this is just to give you a brief overview and then we'll move into the detail. Welcome to the next level, T-levels the post GCSE qualification that combines in-class learning and work experience. It's the best of both worlds, where theory meets practice. It's the know-how. T-levels are designed with 250 leading employers, so students can focus on the knowledge and skills businesses really need today and tomorrow. The subject list is growing year on year, with 24 courses available by 2023. Each one opening doors to work placements, industry contacts and career paths. One T-level is worth three A-levels. From here, students can go anywhere. On to university, take on a higher apprenticeship or launch your career and get straight into work. This is more than a qualification. Designed with employers, we're creating young people who are work ready full of fresh ideas and practical skills, ready to shake up the industry and take businesses to the next level. So what are you waiting for? Get clued up, skilled up and leveled up. Opportunities are there for the taking. Get ahead, T-Levels, the next level qualification. So, um, just a short introduction there um, on T levels. Um, and as I say, um, part of the material that probably you'll see starting to come out a lot more um, from uh, the DfE and from the government um, over the, the coming months as we continue to, to kind of learn more about how they're going to impact us at a wider level. And as I said, I'm, I'm delighted that Sarah has been able to, to make some time to, um, uh, to support this event today. Um, Sarah's head of T level development, the Department for Education, but much more importantly for us, she's one of our trustees here at East Norfolk Sixth Form. Um, it, it makes a huge difference when we have really skilled, knowledgeable 
people working with us as trustees here at the college uh, and I know Catherine um, as always would be keen if there are um, individuals out there who've got skill sets they think would benefit the college to get in touch if you'd like to support us in that that kind of way because it is incredibly powerful for us as an institution and, and it's been hugely beneficial for Sarah um, to be uh, here with us because she asks us lots of very challenging questions and make sure uh, that we're heading in the right direction so without further ado I shall I shall hand over to Sarah and once again many thanks Sarah for, for being being able to be here this morning. Pleasure. Um, so uh, yeah, just a little bit uh, about uh, me before I start. So um, as Simon said, I do work for the Department for Education um, and um, I lead the team that has been um, put in place to design um, and develop T-levels um, and have been in that role uh, well since 2015 but have worked for a much longer time on technical education, so I've seen quite a few changes over the, over the years. Um, what I wanted to do this morning was to talk about the gov you know, current government's policy um, towards technical education and talk about sort of how we've got to this place of um, introducing T-levels um, and the government's ambitions around bringing employers into the skills system, sort of better aligning the education system with employers' needs. So I thought I'll talk a little bit about the background and how we've got to where we are today. Um, could you move the slides on, Simon, please? Um, so the, the, there have been a number of reviews over, the la over recent years um, into technical education. But the most significant in terms of T-levels was the, something called the Sainsbury Review that um, took place in 2015. It was chaired by Lord Sainsbury and uh, it was a very small panel, independent panel, that were tasked with advising ministers on how we could improve the quality of technical education in this country. So, there, you know, there was an acknowledgement that we have a sort of world beating academic education system. A-levels are highly respected um, and we export A-levels all around the world. But our technical education system isn't held in the same esteem, isn't seen to um, be as successful. So the panel was asked to look at how we could make changes that might um, bring technical education up to the same level of esteem as, as our academic education. And they had plenty of anecdotal evidence from employers that um, um, indicated that technical education wasn't really serving their needs. Um, but they looked really at the evidence rather than just the um, anecdotal evidence they were getting. So they looked at a range of economic evidence, socioeconomic evidence, international comparisons, those kind of things. Um, and what they found was that the UK performs poorly in terms of um, productivity compared with other G7 countries. Um, so if you look at um, if you look at sort of um, our productivity performance in this country, there's around about a 20% gap between us, between the UK and places like France and Germany. And a lot of that was put down to um, differences in skills levels um, with our workforce. There were, there were also quite a few arguments around um, individuals. Um, so um, th this is, you know, probably well known, but the panel um, got uh, looked at the evidence in quite some detail and there is um, a lot of evidence to suggest that average earnings increase quite significantly with, um, depending on a person's level of education and that particularly is true when you reach um, level three, sort of A level level. Um, but um, slightly alarmingly, disadvantaged students are um, less likely to achieve level three than their non-disadvantaged counterparts. So there are some um, inherent biases within the systems. Uh, so the panel reported to government. Um, government accepted all of their recommendations and in 2016 published something called the Skills Plan, which um, set out how government would implement their rec recommendations. Um, and one of the key recommendations was around what we now call T-levels. They weren't called that at the time, but they were uh, described and um, set out in a way that, that um, describes T-levels now. 
Uh, the thing, the key things that the panel recommended in relation to what we call T levels were that firstly, there should be just one exam board offering each T level. Um, so you don't have, you know, as we have with other qualifications, lots of exam boards offering same or similar qualifications and competing for a share of the market. You just have one exam board per T level, so there is no competition and no um, incentive to drive down standards. So that was one of the one of the first recommendations. Something else um, that they recommended was that there should be far greater employer input into the design and delivery of T levels, um, and that that really is a feature that um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. They also recommended streamlining the post 16 education system so that the main offer to a 16 year old should be a an A level or A levels, a T level or apprenticeships. That's not to say that there's not room for other qualifications within the system, but the panel thought that those should be the three main choices for 16 to 19 year olds. And I'll talk a bit more about um, the implications of that in a minute. But so we went away and started delivering T-levels and um, we launched the first three T-levels last September. So in education and childcare, uh, design, surveying and planning and in um, digital. Uh, next slide, please, Simon. Something else I just wanted to mention, though, was that in January of this year, um, we also published the um, Skills for Jobs white paper. Um, I'm not expecting that anybody's read it, but the reason that I mention it is because this is another indication of this government's intention to really bring employers into the skills system. So the white paper talks a lot about um, putting employers at the heart of post-16 skills, giving them a central role in shaping particularly local skills provision. So there is um, quite a bit about how um, in local areas the skills provision should meet employers' needs, should address skills gaps, etc. Um, and the, so the, the white paper talks about that a lot and um, proposes uh, ways in which that, that might happen, including the introduction of uh, local skills improvement plans. Um, it also talks about, uh, well, it talks about a whole range of things that are intended to um, drive up productivity in this in this country and, um, you know, particularly in the in the uh, recovery phase from from the pandemic. Um, it, it talks a lot about the importance of technical education and the skills system in um, helping our country to recover. <coughs> uh, so it also talks about things like um, funding the creation of college business centres to support business development and innovation. It talks a lot about um, advanced technical and higher technical skills, using the National Skills Fund to support adults to upskill and reskill. Um, there is um, an initiative to um, so that all adults can achieve a level three qualification as part of the Lifetime Skills Guarantee, um, expanding institutes of technology, um, flexible Lifetime Skills Guarantee, etc. There's a lot in there, but it's, it's all, you know, um, focused on upskilling and reskilling the country um, at, at such a crucial time. When we started writing the, the white paper um, about a year before it was published, the pandemic hadn't, the, the virus hadn't, um, wasn't really a thing and um, so it wasn't, wasn't a feature of the white paper but as time went on um, it, it obviously, you know, it, it became hugely significant and the white paper is very much tilted towards economic recovery. Next slide, please, Simon. <coughs> so T-levels, um, as I said, um, they were introduced on the back of the Sainsbury Review and um, the first three T-levels were launched last September. A little bit about what they are. Um, so they are seen as a technical alternative to A-levels. Um, and as you saw in that video, they are they are worth th 
or they are equivalent to three A levels. That's in terms of the points that they get for entry to university, the UCAS tariff points. Um, but in fact, most T levels are a bit bigger than than a three A level size program, um, and the funding that is attached to them um, is is higher than that. They are at the moment taken in the 16 to 19 phase, but um, we are considering whether we should extend them to adults and if so, what that might look like. Uh, T levels are composite programs, so they are not just a qualification, but they are a, um, a sort of portfolio of different components. The qualification is the main component, but there is also um, a significant period in industry and industry placement which is at least 45 days and in some cases is much higher. That placement can be taken as a single block or it could be taken um, as a sort of regular one day or two day um, placement. It's that we don't dictate how the placement um, should operate, although we do um, offer some, some advice about um, good practice and so on. So the qualification, the industry placement, students also have to have achieved English and maths at level two. Um, so that's good GCSE grade or functional skills. Um, the reason for that is because one of the findings of the Sainsbury panel was that um, one of the things that employers care about the most is, is good uh, numeracy and literacy skills. Um, and so that has been set as a as a requirement for the T level. And then there may be other requirements in a T level that have been set by employers. So, um, you know, for example, um, there could be some kind of health and safety certificate um, or um, for, you know, at the moment we're looking at agriculture could be things like, you know, a chainsaw um, ticket or something like that. So there may be some, some very specific requirements in there as well. But the intention is with the T-level that it prepares someone to um, enter employment, to go directly into employment. They are also designed to allow progression to higher education in a related field or to an apprenticeship. But, but the primary purpose, the way in which they've been designed is to facilitate entry into employment to provide that sort of pipeline of early talent. Um, we have involved employers throughout um, the development of T-levels. So they start with um, something called an occupational standard. Um, these were previously known as apprenticeship standards, but um, whether you call them apprenticeship standards or occupational standards, they are the same thing. They are documents that set out, that have been designed by employers and set out the knowledge, skills and behaviours that are needed to be competent in an occupation. So for each um, occupation, each technical occupation, there is one standard and that standard um, underpins apprenticeships and also forms the basis of um, T-levels. So employers heavily involved at that stage we also involved employers in, um, develop, in uh, developing the qualification. So the awarding organisations that have been uh, that have bid for contracts and have been um, appointed to develop the qualifications have be, have had to involve employers um, in their design. Employers are also involved in validating um, assessment standards. So saying. Um, what the thing is that a person needs to be able to do and to what standard in order to be um, to, to be competent in that occupation. And of course, employers are very involved in offering industry placement. So T levels will only work if we have enough employers um, offering industry placements. But we don't think that's a huge ask. You know, we think that um, that this is a sort of win win situation that by taking on a T-level student, you know, it brings lots of benefits to, to employers. It could be a, a short term project that they put a student on. Um, it could be a way of them, you know, assessing um, future, the future sort of pipeline into their into their industry or their organisation. Um, there are a whole host of benefits for employers. So 
um, this is part of the, the move to get employers much more involved in the skills system. Um, as I said, T levels are much larger than most current vocational qualifications, um, and they and that's partly because of the size of the qualification and because of the industry placement. But students focus on one occupational specialism. They start off with a sort of broad core um, that is largely knowledge based. But as the course goes on, they focus on one occupational specialism and spending a significant amount of time focusing on just one occupational area allows them to really get to a level of competence where they are ready to enter employment. OK, next slide, please, Simon. Um, so these are all of the T levels that we are planning to offer at the moment. Um, as I said, three last September, seven more this September, um, rising to a total of 24 um, by 2023. Um, although having said that, we are considering whether um, there are other occupations or sectors in which we should have T levels. So I wouldn't say that 24 will be the final number. Um, and within each of these these T levels that you see here, um, as I mentioned, there are a number of occupational specialisms from which a student will choose generally just one. So, for example, in design, surveying and planning, which was launched last September, a student could choose civil engineering, business, uh, building services design or um, surveying and design. Those are the kind of occupational specialisms that, that students will focus on. And within each of those T levels, there will be a number of specialisms sitting under them. <coughs> uh, next slide, please, Simon. <coughs> so um, T levels are part of, um, you know, some longer term reforms to technical education. Um, Sainsbury recommended streamlining the qualification system um, in at level three and in the 16 to 19 phase. And we have run um, a couple of consultations over the last two years um, looking at what else should be made available alongside T levels, A levels and apprenticeships. Um, and the, the most recent consultation, which closed in January, set out some proposals um, about um, the qualifications that, that should exist alongside um, the, those other offers in the 16 to 19 phase. Uh, government hasn't yet published the response to that consultation, but will do over the next, next uh, couple of months. But other qualifications, there will be other qualifications that continue to be funded. Um, but the intention is that, um, you know, where other qualifications are funded, they should have a distinct purpose um, and should be uh, truly necessary. So if you have a T level, for example, we wouldn't expect to see other qualifications in that same subject area funded for 16 to 19 year olds. They, if we do fund other qualifications, then they need to support progression to successful outcomes. Um, so that should be to higher levels of study or into a meaningful job. Um, and of course, they sh they should be should be good quality. So a lot of this is about government taking uh, more control over the technical education system in the way that it already does on the on the academic side. Um, and as I said, you know, T levels are the government's flagship technical education qualifications. A lot of money is being put into launching them and supporting them. So both in terms of funding their delivery in colleges, but also some of the investment that's going in in upskilling the workforce, um, refurbishing buildings, providing capital, capital funding for new equipment, a big comms campaign, etc. Government is um, heavily invested in this and um, throwing a lot of money at it. But I think the final point that I just wanted to come back to is that one about employer involvement. Um, 
for those of you on the call, you know, you may, you may not know very much about T levels and may not have been involved in uh, their design or their development or um, or their delivery in any way, but they have been designed to support employers, you know, wherever they are and whatever their role is um, in the skill system. And that for you, that might be um, providing industry placements, taking on a young person for a short period of time or an extended period of time, or it might be because you take on a T-level student once they've they've finished their T-level and are ready to enter employment. So um, I think that's, you know, out of all of these these questions about what makes them different, for me, it's it's the point about employer involvement. Thank you. I think that's it for me. I hope I haven't talked for too long. Never, never, never Sarah. Sarah. I think that was, I think, that was, I think, I'm, I think sure I'm sure that people that found that really informative, really, really helpful. Um, and thank you so much because I think the context of these changes is, is actually the critical bit. Um, and I think you talked a little bit there, uh, particularly about how it sits in the framework. Um, we obviously we've, we've been working with employers over the last couple of years, particularly around placements, but now developing um, kind of understanding of T levels at a wider, a wider level. And we've we have had a couple of questions that kind of pop up. So I, I don't know if you if you'd be happy to to answer those because I know sure. after that you, you you will have to dash off before the end. So if anyone out there does have any questions for Sarah, we're going to take a brief pause just just for a bit a, a quick bit of Q and A, um, and then we, there will be another chance at the end. But if you have got anything, please do pop it in the in the Q and A. Um, so one of the questions that we we have been asked a couple of times is about incentive for businesses so you know what, what wh when you take on a new member of staff whether it is a placement or a new member of staff there are kind of costs and there are, are things that come alongside that so so what what you know is there any support for businesses in taking those individuals on and working with with colleges and schools in these kinds of uh, courses um yeah so it's a good question um it's something that we are looking at at the moment um and I don't think any announcements have been made yet, but um, we are, yes, we are considering whether there could be financial incentives for employers. But more broadly, you know, if there are costs for students, for example, in getting to um, their placement, then there is funding available for that, that kind of thing through the college. Um, so I think, you know, we don't want employers to be disadvantaged by taking on a young person. Um, and so uh, we are we are just looking at the moment at, at what we could do to, to incentivise employers. Yeah, and there have been some pilots. Um, so there have been some some pilot opportunities um, where employers have been able to bid in for, for funding, particularly around additional items uh, that, that yeah. might be needed to avoid those costs. And, and I know that's um, worked variously because, you know, some employers, there aren't many additional costs, but for others, it's been that has been helpful. So I know that's that's been going on as part of that process, hasn't it? Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, yes. And so when I mentioned that we're considering it, we're, you know, reflecting on uh, the extent to which that that made a difference in encouraging employers to come forward and, you know, whether it really did un unblock some of the, the barriers to them being able to offer a placement. That's brilliant. And the, and the one other one that we get asked a lot, and uh, I'm sure you are and the team are kind of continually thinking about how best to present these is is when when businesses are looking at why they should do a T level placement compared to an apprenticeship and what the what the difference is and, and what they get um, out of those two different routes and, and you know, whether they can do both of them. Um, you know, have you got any thoughts about that? So if a, if a business is thinking or oh, apprenticeship or do I get involved with doing T level placements? You know, how should they be looking at that? What should they be thinking about? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, an, an apprenticeship is clearly more of a commitment. So, um, I, you know, the way that we like to think about T levels, in you know, in some respects, is that it's a kind of try before you buy um, route into into an organisation, whereby you know, employ. I think that you know, taking on an apprentice is is a different commitment. Is it's you know, you are it's a, you're offering somebody a job effectively even though the mode of delivery is is slightly different um i think you know with a t level you are 
getting somebody, you know, albeit on a, on a more part time basis, but that might allow you to work out exactly what your needs are and, you know, could then lead to an apprenticeship for that young young person once they've completed their T level. Absolutely. And um, we, you know, we've been part of the, the placement pilot over the last couple of years, and we've certainly seen um, for some of our learners that that is exactly what's happened, whether whether it is that they've gone on into an apprenticeship or just into employment with that organisation. It is a great way of the business um, kind of exploring the value of that young person as part of their um, organisation and also just the, the opportunity to see how they work with the team and, and to see how they pick up the skill sets and, and the jobs that they're being asked to do. And I, I think that, you know, at a really basic level, apprenticeships are 80% on the job and 20% mm -hmm. training and T-levels are 80% training and 20% on the job. And, mm -hmm. you know, th there is an acceptance that there's less less of a person, but you but there's no cost to the business um, for that day of work. And and yet that young person can do really high quality stuff. And we'll hear from, from some employers, um, some organisations later about some of the work that, that young people have done from the college so far. Um, there's one one other uh, quick question that's come in and we have got some schools in the meeting as well, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Welcome to all our school uh, colleagues who are out there. And and that that is really, you know, other than telling students about T-levels, are there any other ways schools can get involved? Um, uh, I'm assuming this is particularly 11 to 16 schools. Um, and, and what might you suggest that they start doing and, and, and how they start preparing young people for, for those T-level routes they might go on to? Yeah, I mean, I'd... You know, I'd suggest if I'd suggest looking at a lot of the comms materials that are there. Um, I, pr I presume this is about awareness raising. Yeah, I mean, I, I think also, uh, you know, it is it is a great new qualification, and I guess um, probably um, a little bit, it's uh, maybe some some envy of of you know these exciting developments, mm -hmm. um, and and I guess uh, I, I hesitate to ask, but um, whether there's there's plans to look at similar streamlining at, at level two um, in the future, just just uh, you know as an aside, but I think it's really you know yeah, obviously informing students is key, but how can and schools support these kinds of, of qualifications at a wider level as well? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this government's policy is still that, you know, at key stage four, a broad and balanced curriculum um, with us, you know, an academic focus is the best preparation for, for young people. So we're not expecting students to start on a T level having done any particular um, study of of, um, of that particular occupational area you know particularly if it's if it's an area that just isn't covered at key stage four then you know that clearly wouldn't be possible but I don't know you know there is something about um, engaging with employers and I think getting young people to think earlier about their longer term career aspirations because at, you know a T level um, it, it this is very different it you know, students will need to think about their occupational specialism fairly early on. Um, so I think, you know, encouraging students maybe by engaging with employers, uh, getting employers in to do talks, etc. I think that's that's going to be really, really important. I think, you know, we've one of the things that Sainsbury panel found was that um, in other European countries, students are making those kind of career decisions much earlier on than we do in this country. And so that that's part of the reforms, encouraging students to to start thinking much earlier than they than they currently do um, and to um, you know really make well informed uh, decisions by by engaging with employers and other um, other partners in the sector. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you ever, ever so much, Sarah. I think we, we could probably chat about T-levels for the next 20 <laughs> minutes, but I don't think everyone else wants to hear us do that. Um, I know that you'll, you'll be hanging around in the background for a little bit, but you do yeah. need to head off to another meeting. Um, obviously, if anyone has got any questions specifically for Sarah, um, please do email in and I'll put some contact details on at the end of the presentation sure. and we yeah. can pass those questions on. Uh, so a huge thanks, Sarah, and, and do have a, a good rest of the day. Thank you.
OK, um, so I'm mindful of time. Um, obviously, one of the reasons uh, for inviting you along today is to talk a little bit about the plans here at the college and hopefully how you can get involved as well. And Sarah's done a brilliant job of introducing T-levels in, in general. I've put some summary information on the screen. Um, we'll obviously be sharing the recording with you and the slides, um, so please don't feel you've got to make lots of notes. Um, so these T-levels are two year courses um, and they're equivalent roughly to three A-levels in size. So it will be what the student does here at the college will be just the T-level. There won't be any other qualifications alongside that. But we're really excited. Uh, we'll be developing um, these over the next few months and have been for the past couple of years for delivery this September. So these will be the first T-levels and offer on the east coast of the county. Uh, we're really excited about that and that is because of our high quality of provision. That's why we're allowed to deliver them um, first. Um, and we're focusing on two particular routes in this first tranche, areas where we've got really, really good core delivery, high outcomes already. Uh, those are the digital routes and some of the health and science routes. And I'll talk a little bit more about those shortly. And the key thing really, and, and one of the things we'd really like you to think about as, as I talk through this, and then as Michael talks a little bit in, in a moment, is um, getting involved in supporting placements, but also a wider level. Uh, you know, if you start to see aspects that you think, actually, this is a really interesting area, we'd like to be involved in delivery, in design, then, then those are things that we really want to start working with local businesses as well. And that might be an area where we can begin working with schools in terms of, of delivery and design of the T-levels here at the college too. So, um, as I said, um, we've got the two different routes and Sarah again talked about the makeup of the T-level and this is a, a really uh, familiar slide if any of you have, have seen any T-level presentations before and it kind of breaks down the overview of the T-level. In the top left hand corner you've got the core, so on any route there will be a core bulk of, of knowledge content and that will be very similar across all routes um, in an area. So for all digital routes, the core will be similar. There'll be some overlap. And then you've got the occupational specialisms and, and as um, Sarah said there are lots of choices within that. Um, sometimes uh, it may be uh, restrictions on, on equipment or space may prevent a college from offering a particular occupational specialism and in other places um, there is a really huge range that, that you could go down. So there's another set of core knowledge that links to the specialism. And then at the bottom you can see some universal elements so English and maths feature highly whether the students have got uh, the level two qualifications or not. Contextualization of that's really critical. Um, there may be some other specialist qualifications, as Sarah said, and then there's this industry placement and the industry placement is a minimum of 315 hours. So it's 45 days across the two years. Um, and here at East Norfolk, the likelihood is that students in the main would start their placement um, towards the second half of the first year on that course. So kind of January, February time in 2022 would be where we'd be looking for first placements. And there's some real flexibility around the placements. Um, some employers we've spoken to are really keen to have a young person in one day a week for um, 45 weeks, uh, which is brilliant and, and provides one set of experience for the young person and one opportunity for the business. Uh, some businesses are really keen to look at block placements. So where you're a business that works around client briefs and project work, there's an opportunity to look at students coming in for a block of time, um, maybe six to eight weeks, particularly in the summer um, of, the, of the college year to work on particular projects and really develop their skill sets. And those placements are really exciting um, because basically it is about that young person doing a huge chunk of the role. It's not about them coming in and just doing um, a bit of admin support and, and a bit of uh, shadowing. They they need to be functioning in that role and we have incredibly um, high flying students in terms of their desire to get on in the business world, um, whether that's in digital sector, health and science, culture and media. Um, we really have got some fantastic young people who are ready and who are already in many cases doing jobs in those sectors that, that we think uh, you know a great pool for you to draw from. Um, as I said, we're offering particularly um, the two routes to start with. So looking at digital first, digital is one of the routes that's been delivered for the last year. So there is a little bit more out there about the specification and, and what it looks like. Um, and we're, we're offering two routes. We're offering the digital business route and the digital production design and development route. There's just a few bullet points there, just summarizing some of the key bits. 
the business services route is very much about offering digital business services um, and about analyzing data and, and um, offering solutions uh, for businesses around the IT and digital field. And then the digital production and design route is about um, as it says on the tin, uh, exploring the world of design and development in the digital world. They'll be looking at projects, uh, problem solving, and also there's a big bit around cybersecurity in that route too. And uh, you know the, the risk of not adapting skills, I think is summarized really nicely in this um, graph at the bottom, which is, is a US based, so is in dollars. So apologies for that. It's surprisingly difficult to get UK um, uh, data um, sets for this. Um, but this is looking at the G20 uh, countries and the risk of not developing those digital skills in our workforces. And for us as a, as a country, it's $185 billion is, is the value risk of not developing digital skills effectively in our future workforce. So we know that nationally that's important, but we also know that regionally it's vital. Um, we have such a thriving sector in, in the digital um, sphere in this area. And, and also critically, so many of our other businesses rely on digital output and having a digital element to their business model. So one thing to point out with this is we're not just looking for digital focused businesses and the digital sector to offer placements and work with us on these routes. We're also looking for all you other businesses and employers out there who have digital elements to your provision. And it, this, this could be a brilliant way of expanding your workforce and really developing some of the avenues that you just haven't had the capacity to do. We've got students on our on our digital programs, our, our computer science and games development and esports programs who can build apps, they can build websites, um, they can do amazing things that could offer real value to your business. So they're the digital routes and we've then got the health, healthcare science routes. So again, these sit within the health and science T level sphere um, and these are particularly looking at developing young people for the health and care sector. Um, so health is very much about um, roles in the healthcare sector and it's supporting and working with adults and young people. So I guess the health uh, T-level route is a bit more person focused. It's, it's assisting and supporting in the healthcare environment. Um, healthcare science is more about measurements, equipment um, and kind of learning and understanding how to support that kind of uh, data collection and testing element of, of healthcare. So it's the science element of, of the health sector. Um, again, really, really um, hugely um, important sectors for the local area. And really um, areas that our students are already working in um, massively across the board. We have vast numbers of students who are doing part time work in care homes um, and are already developing those skill sets. And this is a real area of strength for us. We've had huge numbers of, uh, of health and social students go through the college over the years with with fantastic success and real, real um, kind of gains for the local sector. So we're really excited about this route. This is kind of in our sweet spot and we know that there are businesses and employers out there who are also really excited about this as well. Um, and then the final route that we're offering this September um, are the science T-level routes. Um, so this is very, very, very much about a core science content that overlaps massively with A-levels. So the, the knowledge base in there is uh, a mix of chemistry, biology and, and uh, physics A-level or AS level. Um, and also a big dash of application. So this is about once you've got that core knowledge, how do you apply this in, in the sector, in the workplace? What does that look like if you're doing lab science or measurement science? And again, we're not just looking for employers who are science um, through and through, but employers and businesses who've got key scientific elements to their business model. Um, it could be um, food production where you're looking at, at safety within the production process. Um, it could be in the building um, sector where you're doing surveying measurement science uh, around uh, pre-site work. So, so there really are lots and lots of ways again that you can get involved and get young people who can become part of your workforce for those placements, but also delivering with us at the same time. Now, fun, funnily enough, we've had a brilliant question uh, which ties in perfectly with this slide because I wanted to just give you a sense of the route, how a student might get to a T-level and what might come next. And, and the question is about um, uh, where, where T-levels sit. So do they sit with, with GCSEs or do they sit with A-levels? Um, I mean, the name is a, 
is a is what they where they've tried to kind of indicate a level and t level they kind of they sit in a similar band um, and so t levels are level three qualifications so they sit at the same level as a levels um, they are as academically rigorous as a levels um, as a science teacher um, myself um, over the past few years um, looking at the content for the t level science it is as difficult as any of the three a levels um, that you could do as standalones um, so that's where the T-levels sit um, and the route into that. So some learners won't be quite ready for those T-levels at the start of their, of their journey with us. So there will be a transition program which is available as well. So learners can spend a year developing skill sets so that in September 2022 they then go into their T-level. They'll do that. They'll study that for two years here at the college. Um, and that is a two year course. There's no midway qualification. So after the two years, they'll achieve their T level. That would allow them then to go on to a level four qualification. Again, we offer some fantastic level fours here at the college. Uh, we offer an art diploma. Uh, we offer a games development um, level four qualification and um, a creative enterprise qualification. And from September, we're offering a level four business qualification. All fantastic routes. So some of our T level students will go into those. They're also a route into HE and university, so they'll be able to apply through UCAS for university with that T level qualification. Um, so one of the really important things was they wanted in the development of the T levels to give that parity around flexibility of, of direction and journey. And the final thing is they can go straight into employment and training and apprenticeships. So as Sarah said, one of the great things about T-Levels is it gives you an opportunity to work with young people with no um, cost to you, um, but for a day a week or for a block placement and see how they fit into the team and see how they establish themselves and see whether that post is of value to your organisation. And if it is, then you can look at higher apprenticeships and apprenticeships within the workforce that will then take that young person on to that next step. And that is that journey. It's about understanding that the T-levels form part of that, that transition, uh, where at the moment there are, there are gaps in the system. And what does the future hold? Uh, Sarah's um, diagram was a lot clearer than mine, um, but um, what, what I've kind of done is, is shown a bit of a journey down from the top to the bottom of the screen. And you know we're, we're delighted that we're going to be the first um, in this part of Norfolk to, to offer T-levels, and those will be in digital health and science from 2021. And then from next year, so 2022 September will be launching finance and accountancy T-levels and also T-level in engineering and that will particularly be in design development um, engineering. Um, so those are really, really exciting for us and, and again, fantastically um, developmental for the for the sector locally. Um, then in 2023, we've got legal coming on board and some business and administration T-levels and we, we're looking at habitat and land management as well which is really exciting. And then after that, there are more coming on in 24 and the future. So there's media and broadcast, which fits fantastically with our brilliant media team um, and potentially sport as well. And again, as Catherine said, we've got some fantastic sport opportunities that will tie in. So this is the start of the journey. If you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not sure my business fits in with these routes, there are more coming and there, there will be more coming um, in the next few years. And the key thing really is these these qualifications, T levels, have been built by your sectors. They've been built by large organisations who understand what your sector needs for the future. And, and what we have is really high quality focused students. We, we achieve brilliantly with students at this college, whether that is in A levels or applied courses. And T levels offer a real opportunity to focus that passion. And those students then come into your sector, they build it, they grow it, and then they feed back into the loop. And that's really what we want your support and help with. So what do we need from you? Um, well, I've talked about it quite a lot. Work placements won't come as a surprise um, and that can be the full placement it can be 45 days. We can also split the placement um, so they can be placed with two different employers uh, and that can be really beneficial to the student. But it doesn't have to be that. If what you can offer is a day visit for our students on a digital route or in the science route, then we want to hear from you. If you can do some virtual work experience, if you can do one of these for our students and talk about the business and get some of your employees to talk about their roles within the business, we want to hear from you and we want you to be involved in really developing these courses and these young people for your sector. 
And that can go as far as being involved in delivery. If you've got staff who are really keen to get involved in inspiring the next generation, then let us know. We can work with you to design bespoke resources and content that, that deliver around your sector, around your business, around projects you've got. We can get groups of young people to respond to client briefs and to do projects for you. And I'll come on to, to some of that in a second. Um, and really, it's about them developing and learning the skills that benefit your organisation. And it might even be that you think, oh, I've got some old equipment that would be perfect for students to learn on. We don't need any more. We'd love to hear from you around that as well, because although there is money to, to develop these these T levels, it's never going to be as much as we'd like. And, and you may well have time, um, uh, equipment and, and maybe even facilities that would allow us to really enhance our offer. Um, I'm going to um, just just show you one quick clip. Um, I have got a couple on here, but we will send the slides out um, so that you've got these. Um, and we've worked with lots of different organisations. There's a great clip here that I won't show you. It's a, it's a little bit longer uh, from Trisha Hall at the Time and Tide Museum. Um, that's very much targeted at how we encourage students to get involved in placements. Please do have a look at that, particularly schools colleagues. Um, we've worked with um, volunteer and, and charitable organisations as well, like the Shrublands Community Trust, and they really benefit benefited from, from a placement because effectively the student place there built a new website for them, uh, which they just hadn't had the capacity to do before. Uh, and I just want to show a quick film, um, which is Josh. Um, Josh Trett is uh, the owner and CEO of uh, Trett Films. Um, and this is just a little um, view um, from his perspective of why you'd want to get a student involved in um, a placement. So I think when you take somebody on for work experience, it shouldn't be seen as a burden for yourself or your team or, or your company. Um, and it shouldn't be seen as babysitting. You should really see it as an opportunity to have somebody who can really bring skills to the table for, for your work or your projects, whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, it's a really valuable member of the team, whether it's for a day, uh, a week or a month, however long they happen to be sort of in that work experience position for. Um, and the other thing to consider is that it's it's giving them a valuable um, foot into a certain industry or experience that they may see as valuable as well. So it's those two things. It's it's not seeing it as just babysitting or a huge burden, but actually gaining value from it from yourself. Um, but also that you're, yeah, you're helping give back and you're giving somebody um, a potential platform to, to sort of uh, take the next step or even the first step in, in their career. So I think when you take somebody so that was just a quick, quick little insight. And I know uh, Josh is is happy to to talk to people more about that. And and the student who was placed with Josh um, had an amazing time. Um, I'm going to hand over now uh, to Michael. Now, Michael um, is one of our assistant principals here at the college, um, and he oversees um, many aspects of the college, more than I can list. But one of the key ones is our team who work with employers. So I'll hand over to Michael. He's going to talk a little bit about them, uh, what they can offer and how you can get involved. Hi everyone, great to be with you this morning and, and as Simon says one of my key roles is to work with our futures team and um, our careers team. I'm also linked into the to the partial support teams um, at the college as well. So we're very fortunate actually, so there's lots of support for students. So they of course get their teachers, but they also have progress tutors, progress managers and, and various support staff um, supporting them in their journey. And really we're all focused at getting them the best possible outcomes and, and raising their aspirations. So, so ultimately it's, it's getting them thinking about their their career opp opportunities and, and really aiming high um, and employers have a key part to play in this and, and they always have done even before T levels were, were developed um, we, we always recognized the, the importance that employers had into giving students that experience of the workplace um, for them to ultimately make those really important decisions about their future pathways and, and the more encounters that they had with employers uh, the more informed that decision would be um, but now that T levels are online that like Simon has been talking through and Sarah's um, been discussing with you this morning that they're a great opportunity and a great alternative um, for, for students. Um, so of course we have our academic students here who will just study the traditional um, A-levels, but we have um, lots of students who will combine 
A levels with vocational BTEC courses and from September we're going to have students on, on these fantastic T level courses as well and ultimately whatever route that they're, they're going down um, we still want them to be considering university as a potential option um, apprenticeships as an option and and also going directly into employment and that is part of what Amy and Lucy um, are doing at the college as part of our futures team and linking in with students. It's about them actually offering that support, linking them in with employers and making sure that they, they really do explore all of the pathways out there, not just the pathways that that maybe they, that they've considered um, as you know the, the only option available to them. It's about really sort of pushing them to, to, to think about all of the, those options. And we have a great online platform actually called Unifrog, which really supports our team in supporting them. And we, there's lots of um, testimonials from, from different employers on there. So as Simon mentioned, I mean, if you can work with us to, to offer work experience, that that's great. Um, but even if it is just actually um, beaming in to give a virtual talk to a class, um, to, to run a workshop, Amy and Lucy would be really happy to, to work with you um, to, to arrange that because they, they have direct links to the partial and curriculum teams and can really make that that work um, really really well so they support students that they, they, they will um, be the point of contact for, for arranging and supporting students on work placements. Um, they support all the career research, that they support students with their applications beyond college. Um, and like I said, it's, it's they're, they're really, really keen to work with you. And I'll pass on their details um, in a second, but they've done some great, great work in, in trying to build those links to, to local employers. And, and, and they really have, and we've got some great employers working with us. And obviously we're keen to have those, those discussions with, with more and more. In terms of students on work placements, we, we use an, another online platform um, at college called Growfile. So, so we've invested in this in this um, online platform for the past few years and, and it's been brilliant because we recognise that it is a commitment from employers to take on students. Um, what we're what we're looking for is students who actually provide something to that business. So the students are actually learning from that and it helping them make informed decisions about their future, but at the same time that the employers will get something out of it as well. We, we've got some amazing students here um, and, and you know that they will bring some you know expertise um, to, to employers like Simon mentioned. So that's something that potentially the employers haven't got with their current teams, and um, especially if they're a smaller business. But at the same time, we, we appreciate that it is a time commitment. Um, and that's one of the, the key reasons we've invested in Growfire actually is to make this process of students coming on work placements as easy and as seamless as possible. And it allows actually the time that employers spend with students to be real quality time. So actually discussing targets, um, expectations from the employer, what the student wants to get out of it, um, what's important that they what they um, complete. To, to enable you know, the students to actually su successfully complete their courses um, and not spend so much time with the admin. Because the admin's important, it's got to be there, but we want to make that as easy as possible so the time that employs them with students is really meaningful and quality time. So for example, the Growth Art platform, um, employers will get an information pack um, that will go through the whole platform in, in, in huge amounts of detail. Um, but essentially, students can have access to it on their phones. Employers can also have access to it via, via a web link. Um, and students will be able to go on and log their hours. Um, so again, that's a really important part of the process, but we don't want it to take a lot of time. So students will log their hours and then the employers will just get an email with a link just to verify those hours. So, so it's really, really quick and easy to do. Um, in terms of that communication between the employer, the students and the college, again, that's key for all sorts of different reasons. So the students can message the Futures team directly via this Growth Fire platform and employers can do the same. So in terms of Lucy and Amy, of course, they'll be available via emails, but everyone's connected through the Growth Fire, um, app as well. Um, setting goals and targets is really important for all students on work experience. It's particularly important if they're studying T-levels or uh, a vocational BTEC course, um, because there will be targets that need to be set by teachers um, that students will need to work on on placement. So again, that communication um, is, is really quick and easy through this because teachers will also have access to Growth Fire. They can go on, they can set targets, employers will be able to see those targets, discuss them with the students. Students will be able to upload evidence against those targets. They can take pictures, they can write in um, daily diaries, for example, little notes. Um, and all of a sudden that, that is the evidence base that the qualification needs to show that a student has completed um, that, that um, particular um, work, work placement. 
and at the end of the placement as well any feedback um, can can be delivered through this Growfar app as well um, all the health and safety again that, that that is critical that's really really important but again everything can be in one place on the Growfar platform for everyone to see for everyone to sign off um, and actually parents are involved in this process as well so even before a student will start on the placement the parent will also be able to link into Growfar to actually see what the placement is to be able to confirm they're happy with the student actually going out and then all of the health and safety um, paperwork that needs to be completed again we have made it as easy as possible it's all done through Growfar um, it's all done through just just reading through risk assessments uploading any necessary documents um, and then actually it's all at a click of a button online and if um, that if there's any employers who would find this difficult for any reason we can work through them and, and actually do a lot of this on their behalf as well and actually share the information um, in a different way so it's a brilliant package it links everyone together and it really sort of you know cuts down on that admin time and Lucy and Amy um, are never far away um, and they're, they're really keen um, to work with you and as Simon said it isn't just the work placements opportunities I mean you know that they, they'd be brilliant for our students um, but it's, it's all sorts of different work that they, they can do for employers essentially so you know a, lo a lot of them have been working during lockdown virtually so um, employers have got in touch with us and said oh actually it'd be great for, for a student to develop this or to develop that or to work with us on on this project um, an example of a project is actually with a local newspaper um, going digital and actually needing to upload everything onto digital systems and 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 the organization need to support with that our students are really happy to help the futures team link the students in so it worked for the students to get that experience and also the employer to, to actually have all of this all of their material go digital and, and it was great and actually it could all happen through lockdown as well as, as a lot of um, work as, as we're starting to realize can be done you know at home and virtually rather than in the workplace so so any of that we're very happy for our students to work with you um, on any projects that you may have Brilliant. I think, Michael, uh, we've we've nearly come to the end. Um, I've on the last slide put some contact details, um, which uh, hopefully will um, be useful to you because I'm sure you are all now thinking, how can I get involved in this? Um, uh, as Michael has said, we've got a huge range of offer um, across the college. And although we focused on T-levels today and we've, we've talked a bit about placements, um, there are so many ways you can get involved and, and please do get in touch um, with, with us to, to find out how you can do that. Um, and, and someone's just asked a question, which which I think actually, Michael, it might be worth you. You may be just talking a little bit about um, maybe directly, because I think it, it is one of the areas that I think employers do worry about a little bit. And, and I think really T levels um, are bringing a lot more accountability and a lot more focus on the on the college to make sure the quality of the placement is there and, and that that communication is there. So I don't know if you want to if you want to talk about that directly. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, um, the Growfar platform is just brilliant for all confidential communication because it links in the people that actually need to know about placement. So only the employers, only the student on a particular placement will have access to all of that information. So everything can be done confidentially through the Growfar platform. Um, in, in terms of the paperwork, again, Growfar has really streamlined everything. So in the past, um, we've had paper copies of risk assessments, for example. Um, we moved to a, to an email system, but again, even with emails, it's quite difficult because of the, the volume of emails that, that we all get um, and have to then search through inboxes for. Everything now is done by Grover. So all of the college risk assessments are on there. So we've got a template for all employers to use in terms of these. Are, this is our expectation of what would be provided for students on placement, and, and this is what would happen if these incidents occurred um, and then an employer is asked to read through that confirm that they're happy to, to to go through everything on the risk assessment and they've got an opportunity to um, tailor it to their particular business so if there are other risks that they want to identify we can work th with them so we're very fortunate actually to have Lucy and Amy and something I forgot to mention actually is we're also going to have a, a futures manager in place from September so another member of the futures team working very closely with Amy and Lucy will better provide this support that they will work with you to maybe tailor a risk assessment so if it is, is you know, particular business with some different risks to consider, we can work with them to do that. But everything is signed off on Growfar. Um, all of the insurance documents, again, it's a click of a button, entering details. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's all actually 
um, been streamlined so it to work really, really well. Um, so I, I hope that answers the question. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think it does. And I, and I think really what, what the T levels are trying to do and what we're trying to um, kind of say with, with this move towards this new type of qualification is the placement is a, is a critical bit of um of the experience and i think probably um one of the one of the things that focuses students minds and teachers minds is when the placement is part of that final grade that final decision making process so something we haven't really touched on is you can only get your t level your full qualification if you complete your placement so that students can't kind of go into it half-heartedly they have to fully embrace that model from the start they have to have very clear targets and they have to show how they're working towards them and there has to be a, a project brief there has to be an employer project something that they have ownership of within that um, and they have to do more employer projects actually within the course of the t level as well um, so it's all focused around saying look you you don't get your t level if you don't take the placement seriously and focus on how you're going to work in that business environment and um, part of the support for learners will also be kind of employability skills so how do they work in in the workplace how do they function what do they need to think about what what are the challenges um, so there are some really really good opportunities to make this a really core part of the students experience and, and hopefully make it really impactful for you as well as employers um, so just just to finish off, really, um, uh, you know, um, some some contact details for you. And, and again, as Michael has said, we will be sending out the slides and the recordings, so you will have them. Um, but I'm I'm sure um, if you if you do need any um, information, um, if if it doesn't look like there's an obvious link there, please just um, get in touch and and ask. Um, so uh, if you've got general inquiries, so just generally things about the college, then then John is a great person to ask. He's our head of admission and marketing and PR um, so he's a really good contact for you to have um, then you've got Amy and Lucy's email addresses again there and there's also a generic uh, futures app which you might find it easier to remember uh, so any employer links any any anything about you wanting to get involved in working with the college um, then please do get in touch with either Amy or Lucy directly or generally through the futures at East Norfolk um, if you've got specific questions about curriculum or how the T levels work then you can get in touch uh, with with me and you've got my email address there but if you've got specific questions about routes um, then I've put the email addresses of the team leads there so you've got Ellie who's um, our digital uh, oversight um, so that's Ellie Buchan um, and then you've got Gary who's our health healthcare science and science lead um, and you've got his email address there as well and as I said Although we'd love you to be offering placements um, and that would be fantastic, actually just getting involved in the college, in the delivery and in students being aware of your businesses and what they can offer, I think could be really, really exciting. Um, I should pause there and um, we've come to the end. Uh, many thanks for, for coming along. There is a, a, a bit of time for us to, to hang around and answer any questions you have. We're not, we're not dashing off, but I'm very mindful that many of you will have things you need to go and do. Um, so a huge thank you uh, to Catherine at the start for introducing the college, um, to Sarah for giving that department um, for education oversight and we were really lucky to have Sarah because she's incredibly busy at the moment. Um, a huge thanks to Michael for, for kind of talking about um, the support, the development of, a, of the, um, the the links between employers and our fantastic futures team um, and, uh, and, and thank you again for, for attending. We will send the slides out, we will send um, the recording out and please do share it, please do pass it on to other employers that you think might be interested and encourage them to get involved because it is only by doing that, it's only by working together, um, education provider and businesses that we can make T levels work and that we can really build the sectors that we are so passionate about in this area. So I shall finish there. Um, I'll pop the contact list back up on the screen if you do want to grab any email addresses um, and otherwise we will hover in the background for a minute or so just in case any other questions come through um, and otherwise have a great day and a, and a fantastic weekend when you do make it there eventually. See you later everyone.